Ladies and gentlemen, the Great Southwest Radio Theater Project is on the air. Live from the Performing Arts Center in Coolidge, Arizona, the Great Southwest Radio Theater Project presents an evening of old-time radio drama. Tonight, we bring you an episode of the long-running radio series, Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly. Fibber McGee and Molly, the dramatic story of a woman with her faith in a man and a man with his faith in a newspaper. Will something exciting, unusual, or momentous take place in this little frame house at 79 Wistful Vista tonight? Or is that expecting too much? Yeah. I guess it's expecting too much. Anyway, here they are, Fibber McGee and Molly. Anything interesting in the paper, dearie? Well, here's an interesting article in Crop Surfaces, Molly. You don't say. Well, yeah. Now, take corn, for instance. Certainly. We can take it and we can dish it out. Well, hey, I'm serious. This writer says that if conditions keep up, the small farmer will be completely annihilated. Oh? Hey, uh... What's uh, annihilated? Annihilated. Uh huh. Why, that means, uh, well, um, when well, the farmer. Uh, well, uh, now, wh for instance. Where, where's the dictionary? It's probably in the closet with the rest of your stuff. Give me your key and I'll get it for you. No, oh, no, you don't. You let that stuff in that closet alone. I've got all my things arranged in there just the way I want it. Now, don't be silly. Give me the key. Oh, well, okay. Now, let's see. Which one of these is the key to the... Hmm. Oh, heavenly days. Why do you carry all these keys? Does it make you feel important or something? What do you mean, important? Well, every one of them keys is necessary. What's that little key there for? Oh, well, that's a padlock key. What padlock? Well, for the backyard gate we used to have in Peoria. What are you keeping that for? Are you homesick? No, but if we ever move back to Peoria, I'd try to rent the same house, because this key fits the padlock there. Boy, well, you got to think ahead in these things. And you see this key here? Looks like the key to a can of salmon. No, sardines. I use that to clean my pipe with. Oh, I see. Now, let's see, which one of these keys is the closet door key? Say, maybe we better just see if the closet is locked. Let me take a look. Oh, it's locked, all right. You don't think I'd leave all my personal defects laying around for any prowler to get his hands on. McGee, it isn't locked. Oh, hey, oh, McGee, can, can you give me a hand with all this stuff that's fallen out? Oh, help, McGee. I'm buried alive. Get this junk off of me. All right, but Dad Rabbit, you might have been more careful. Quick, help, there's, there's funny little bugs all over me. Brush them off, quick. Oh, calm yourself, calm yourself. Them are my trout flies. Oh. Well, doggone it, Molly, why'd you have to go and mess up my closet? Dear, oh dear, look at all this junk that fell out of that closet. Oh, well, don't worry, I'll put it all back, Molly, I'll... No, no, you won't. Huh? We're going to go through that pile of whatnots and throw out everything we don't need. Oh, yeah? Well, I've been through this stuff a hundred times, and there ain't a thing of it that I can spare. Oh, there isn't? No. What's this rusty old horseshoe for? Well, I found that in 1911. As soon as I find three more, we can pitch horseshoes in the backyard. I see. You expect to find three more? You betcha. You don't think the automobile is here to stay, eh? Well, it won't be if we don't catch up with the payments. Hiya, mister. Oh, hello there, little girl. What you want? You remember that job you promised me to take care of your baby? Only you don't have one, so I was going to bring my little brother over and take care of him. Remember? Huh? Huh? Do you, huh? Well, yes, yes, sure, I remember, but I didn't... Well, well, the deal is off, see? Oh, what do you mean, the deal is off? In the first place, there wasn't any deal, and in the second place... My mommy had to 
take my little brother to the doctor today, so I can't bring him over. Oh, well, that's too bad. What's the matter with your little brother? Anything serious? My mama thinks so. Oh, she thinks so, huh? Uh-huh, she thinks so. She thinks he swallowed a dime. Swallowed a dime? Well, say, that is serious. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, yes, it is. Aw, oh, he didn't swallow a dime, I betcha. Huh? It was only eight cents. <laughs> only eight cents? Well, how do you know? Well, we were playing slot machine, and I fed it to him. What you doing, mister? Well, we're cleaning out this closet, if you must know. I mustn't. Mustn't what? No. No? Yes. What? Huh? Oh, listen, kid. Suppose you go on home and annoy somebody else. Well, go bother your daddy. He isn't home. He's working on the senseless. On the what? The senseless. He goes to people's doors and asks them how many people in the family and how old they are and all that stuff like that there, I betcha. Oh, you mean the census. Shucks, I didn't think a kid your age knew what a census was. Well, I do, I betcha. Yeah? Yeah, well, goodbye, mister. Ah, oh, heavenly days, McGee. Imagine all this stuff falling out of one little closet. How'd you ever get it all in there? Oh, I don't know. I guess I just inherited a gift for packing. My great Aunt Minnie had a job stuffing pimentos, pimentos into olives. Oh, hey, look at this, Molly. It's the stool I made in manual training. Hmm. Yeah. Didn't you ever finish anything? It's only got two legs. Well, they wouldn't let me stay in the fifth grade another year. Ah, oh, McGee, look. One of our old dance programs from before we were married. I didn't know you were so sentimental, dearie. Is that a dance program? Well, I was saving it on account of that little pencil hanging on to it. Ah, oh, yeah. listen to this. Waltz, turkey trot. Waltz, Bunny Hop, Waltz, Texas Tommy, Waltz, <laughs> Grizzly Bear, Waltz. Oh, you had every dance with me but the last waltz. Hey, McGee, who did you dance that one with? Why, nobody. We set that one out in the buggy, remember? Oh, yes. <gasps> And we couldn't go back to the dance because you sat on a box of chocolate-covered cherries and spoiled your white pants. <laughs> well, let me see, Molly. How about this old photograph album here? I should say not. That's got all our family pictures in it. Oh, dear. Oh, here's one of me, Aunt Addie and Aunt Carrie. They both had big families. Yeah? Well, how many kids did they have, anyway? Ten between them. Add six and carry four. Mickey, now what are you doing? Well, hello, folks. I was just going by and I thought, uh, what goes on here? Have you been buying out an antique store? Well, hi, Mr. Announcer. Nah, this is just a lot of stuff McGee's been hoarding in the closet, Mr. Announcer. Isn't it wonderful how much you can pack into so little space? For instance, you only give me about six lines to tell how Johnson's Glow Coat saves hours of housekeeping because it beautifies and protects linoleum with absolutely no rubbing or buffing. Isn't it wonderful? But in those six lines, I think I can get the idea across pretty well that a self-polishing preparation like Glow Coat is the very essence of good housekeeping. Hmm. Boy. And it's so easy to use that it's easy to tell about. Isn't he marvelous, folks? That guy has dedicated his whole life to Johnson Gloco. What do you mean, Fever? Well, they tell me that way back when you were in college, they wanted you to stoke the crew. And you said, no, no, no stoking, no rubbing, and no buffing, even for dear old University of Arizona. Is that true, Mr. Announcer? No, no, I wasn't a crewman. I went out for ROTC. Oh, Reserve Officers Training Corps? No, revolutionizing old-time cleaning. Uh-huh. Well, so long, folks. He got you there, McGee. Well, as the golf ball says when it landed five feet from the tee, I think I've been topped. 
You mean you're gonna keep all this junk? Can't we throw any of it out? Nope, no ma'am. I got a use for every one of these things. Now, you don't need this, do you? Huh? Now what good is one snowshoe? Why, one what? Snowshoe. Oh, is that a snowshoe? Why, shucks, no wonder Billy Hills beat me so badly playing tennis. Well, McGee, I've just about exhausted my impatience with you. Why? Packing all that useless junk back in that closet. How about these old books? What old books? Well, let me see. Oh, them. Why, them's my correspondence course in taxidermy. Taxidermy? Why on earth did you want to study taxidermy? Well, how did I know that it meant stuffing birds and animals? And there I was, stuck with a chauffeur's license, a city map, and a cabbie's cap. Well, hurry up and put your playthings back in the closet. Okay. It looks terrible laying around here on the floor with all of that. Oh, oh I'll get it. Hello? Oh, no, this is the McGee residence. You've got the wrong number. Oh, is that you, Mert? Aye, Gab. Every week, the same thing. How's every little thing, Mert? What say? Your Uncle Gulliver? Oh, that's too bad, Mert. Oh, my. And they ain't found the body yet, eh? Oh, heavenly days, McGee. What happened? Mert's uncle drove his car off a cliff and had to walk home. Well, they found the trunk lid up in a tree, but they don't know where the body is. What say, Mert? Oh, that's okay, Mert. Everybody has a wrong number now and then, except Irving Berlin. Well, now, let's see now. McGee, why are you saving this long stick of bamboo? Why, Molly, that's got a very definite purpose. If I was offered a job as a sparring partner for Joe Lewis, well, that's a 10-foot pole I wouldn't touch it with. <laughs> oh, say... Do, do you really think you can get all this stuff back into the closet? Why, sure I can. I don't want anybody touching these things either but me. They're too valuable. Oh? If I had done an hour ago, if I hadn't been interfered with... All right, you do it then. I have some work to do in the kitchen. All right, I'll get it. Dad rabbit, I wish somebody would crawl through the window just for the novelty of it. Come in. Well, hello there, McGee. Oh, it's you. Just thought I'd come in to tell you that, oh my goodness, what's all this mess? Oh, just something out of my closet. I'm straightening it up. Hey, Gildersleeve, put that hatchet down. I'll do no such thing. That's my Boy Scout hatchet you borrowed from me last summer. Dad Rabbit, it ain't nothing of the kind. That's my Boy Scout hatchet. Look at the insignia on the handle there. Owl Patrol. Well, I belong to the Owl Patrol myself. Oh, yeah? You and the Owl Patrol? Ha! <laughs> Why, you don't even know the password for the Owl Patrol. Who? Well, somebody must have told you. <laughs> Listen here, Gildersleeve, I bet you don't know a thing about Scout. I do, too. I was an Eagle Scout with 26 merit badges. Oh, go on. Can you tie a sheep shank? Can you imitate the mating cry of the chimney swallow? Uh... Can you tell which way is north when you're lost in the woods? Uh, certainly. Oh. Well, I face south and then turn in the opposite direction quick. Ah-ha! Look, Gildersleeve, if you're really a scout, you can do your daily good turn by scramming out of here and letting me finish putting this stuff back in my closet. Well, all right, McGee. Well? You sure that isn't my hatchet? On my word of honor as a member of the Owl Patrol, Gildersleeve. Well, all right, McGee. I'll see you later. Okay. Uh, say. Huh? Give me the password again, will you? Who? Who? Ha, ha, ha! He's no Boy Scout. Well, that guy couldn't build a fire in a hayloft by rubbing two sticks of dynamite together. Oh, well, I got to get the rest of this stuff back. Well, that looks like about all of it. Yep, it's all packed back in there. Boy, what a job. Hey, Molly, Molly. Look, I got all that stuff back in the closet, all straightened out. Splendid, McGee, splendid. And after this, when you want something out of there, let me get it for you. All right. Yep. But now that you've got the dictionary out of there, won't don't you leave it out? We may need it again. Oh. What's the matter? Well, I forgot to leave it out. Well, I, I packed the dictionary back in there. 
Oh, heavenly days. Now here, now you stay away from there. Now I know exactly where I put it. I can get it out without any problem. Here, I'll just dig in here and... Oh! oh. Molly, Molly! Yes? I found the dictionary. How do you spell annihilated? Oh, now look, McGee. That junk of yours is positively not going back into that closet. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, yes, it is. Well, all right then. But if it does go back in there, I'll arrange it myself. Now, you keep your hands off it this time. You going to do it all by yourself? I am. Fine. Well, as the fat lady says when she took off her corset, that lets me out. Taint funny, McGee. Good night now. Good night. You have just heard the Great Southwest Radio Theater Project's production of Fibber's Closet, starring Terry Turner as Fibber, Jane Toth as Molly, Bill Alwyn as the Great Gildersleeve, and Gene Calder as a smart alecky girl. Our Foley sound technician is Rod Gibson, our audio technician, Sam Honey. Lighting assistants were Gianna Stone and James Elliott. This is your announcer, Ralph Swain, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night for another episode of Fibber Buggy and Molly. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. I got my social security now, and it's a good deal by Cracky. That's right. Social security provides you insurance protection with benefits, which you'll get when you retire at 65, or when you reach 50 if you're totally or permanently disabled. Social security also provides family survivor benefits for servicemen's widow and minor children. If you're a military service member, it's important for you to learn how many years of service you will need to qualify for a second retirement check. Men can collect Social Security at age 65, but women can collect at age 62. Have you investigated your Social Security benefits? Thank you, FDR. It's a good deal from the New Deal. Two beans times two beans makes four beans. Nescafe uses much more beans. Ten beans times four beans and add three more beans. Make, make 43, 43 rich coffee beans. Yes, you get 43 beans in every cup of Nescafe. Real coffee beans, that's all there is in Nescafe. 43 beans make every cup of Nescafe. The all coffee instant coffee. With the let's have another cup taste. Extra beans means extra flavor. Today's Nescafe goes all the way for flavor with 43 choice beans in every cup. So be sure to always keep a 12-ounce jar of Nescafe instant coffee in your kitchen cupboard so you can enjoy a delicious hot cup of Nescafe instant coffee. Yes, you get 43 beans in every cup of Nescafe. Real coffee beans, that's all there is in Nescafe. 43 beans make every cup of Nescafe the all-coffee instant coffee. With the let's have another cup taste. Sit back and relax with a cup of Nescafe instant coffee and enjoy this sentimental favorite, please, Bonnie Lee. Time.
let's hear it for Bonnie Lee. Project players in alphabetical order from Coolidge, Arizona, Bill Alwyn. From Casa Grande, Arizona, Gene Colder. From Florence, Arizona, Bonnie Lee. Also from Casa Grande, Renee Sandoval. From Eloy, Jane Toth. From Casa Grande, uh, by way of Sergeant Bluff, Iowa, Harry Turner. From Coolidge, Norma Van Heeswick. And also from Coolidge, Arizona, our Foley artist, Rod Gibson. I'm your announcer and director of tonight's program, Ralph Swain, you've been a great audience. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs>